Hey, what's up, guys? Petman here, Carolina Varsity, taking a detailed look at teams uh, 22 through 12 in the best of last this week. Uh, in, it, in the interest of time, we kind of shortened the video. Uh, we only talked about the top 11 teams and the main one, but I did want to um, kind of explain why I have the rankings the way I have them this week. Uh, starting with number 22 is Garinger. They lost 42 to 8 to West Mech. Uh, for Garinger, they got Ashbrook coming up this week. They got to cut down on turnovers. They had four fumbles in the first half, and West Mech's already a pretty good team, so you don't want to make it any easier for them uh, by turning the football over, giving them uh, short fields. Um, they weren't able to get on the board. They've scored a couple times this year, so you know, there's some progress on the offensive side of the ball, but um, I think for them to pull off a win, the defense is going to have to um, step up and give a, a really good effort to kind of hold some teams down a bit. Uh, for number 21 is Hopewell. They dropped five spots this week, 44-0, lost to Mooresville. Uh, I think this was kind of a defining game for Hopewell to kind of show us where they are or where they're going to be this year. And um, unfortunately, you know, they're a young team working through some growing pains. They had trouble stopping the run against Mooresville and couldn't really get on the board offensively. Um, they got Olympic this week. Um, Olympic's not as strong as Mooresville, but, um, you know, they're playing – a lot better. So Hopewell's going to have to find some offense um, in order to try and pull an upset in that game. Number 20 is Independence. They lost 14-12 to 12 to Olympic. Um, they dropped one spot in the rankings. Um, you know, it's unfortunate with everything that's going on with Independence right now. I think the main thing for them is got, they've got to settle on, you know, who's playing where, and then they got to settle on you know their schemes, and then they got to build consistency from that. When you're running, when you're behind in, um, you know, scheme wise and position wise and all that, the the main thing you got to have is consistency to build that among all your players and and your coaches for that matter. So, you know, you can kind of start building expectations and you know things of that nature. So. You know, for them, the pre-conference is kind of like the preseason. You know, everything for them that's going to be key is going to be in the conference now. And um, they've got West Mac this week, which is a tough game, but the offense is really going to have to continue to build on what they did last week. They did score 12 points. Uh, the defense didn't play that badly, obviously. only gave up 14, so the, the defense can keep up the effort and the offense comes around a little bit. Um, hopefully they'll start to be um, consistently competitive in uh, more of these football games. Number 19 is West Charlotte. They lost 26 nothing to Harding. Um, you know, for West Charlotte, they have a lot of offensive talent. And um, one of the things that I mentioned in the uh, forums is um, some things that I would do if I was OC over there. And mainly it, it involves trying to get, you know, guys in space uh, with the football. Um, screens, jet sweeps, um, isolate by formation. And if a team tries to take advantage of uh, covering a star player on one side of the formation, you have an advantage on the other side. Um, you know, I don't think they're, they're, their line is not, you know, huge, but they're a decent size. The quarterback looks like he's a younger kid, but um, you can give him some simple things to do. And um, you let your star players and Ja'Cory A. Patton, Ja'Cory Reeves, and Cam Lee uh, kind of do the work. Uh, with the football and offense. Defensively, I don't think they're that bad. Against Harding, they just kind of got worn down because they were on the field so much. Um, but, yeah, offensively, you kind of got to look at what you're doing and try to, you know, put your players in the best position to be successful. Um, they've got Gaffney this week, which will not be an easy game, but it will be a huge crowd down there in the reservation. Um, you'll, we talked about that in the game video. Um, but, you know, West Charlotte's got to get the offense going. And, um, you know, it's going to be tough here going forward, especially in that uh, tough Mecca conference. Uh, number 18 is Olympic. Olympic won 14-12 to 12 over Independence. That moved them up three spots in the ranking in number 18. Um, Olympic has Hopewell this week, and they've got a shot of um, going above 500 at 2-1. and one. They've already had a bye week. And um, obviously that bye week kind of helped them out, especially on the defensive side of football. Um, they won a low-scoring game, and, um, you know, that's a good sign for them to bounce back after the uh, tough uh, opening loss to Butler. And um, if Olympica can kind of get some momentum going, you know, they're they're on that cusp of possibly um, sneaking in the playoffs once again this year once they get into conference play. 
Um, number 17 is Barry. They had a buy, but I moved him up three spots uh, despite the buy, mainly because of some of the other performances below them. But Barry, you know, unlike a couple of these other teams below them, Barry has shown an ability to score. And, you know, they haven't stopped a lot of people, but if you can score, you know, it gives you a chance. And Barry has a couple of athletes, and they have a good young quarterback in David Hernandez. He's only a sophomore, and um, he can, you know, put the ball in some good places. And um, I think the future is bright for that offense with uh, Coach Witherspoon there, who's a very bright offensive mind. And um, I've been impressed with what they've been able to do on that side of the ball. And just give them time with the defense. Um, you know, they lost a ton to different schools in the uh, area here. And, um, you know, those guys will, will be back strong, I believe. Uh, number 16 is Providence. They lost 14-7 to Myers Park, but I did move them up a spot because this shows a lot of growth. Um, we saw what Vance did to them. We saw what happened to them with Charlotte Latin. But for that defense to come back from those two tough football games and hold a good Myers Park team to 14 points and be in that game. It was 7-7 in the fourth quarter. And, um, you know, nobody around Charlotte saw that coming. So, you know, that's a kudos to Coach Bowles and his staff. And we talk all the time about recipes for upsets and how you win ball games. And defense is the key. Now, if their defense can continue to be consistent with that kind of effort, they're going to be in a lot of football games. And, um, you know, hopefully for Providence fans, this is the start of where you see your program starting to, you know, kind of come around and recover from some of the losses they had um, over the past couple of years with some talent that's gone on to the next level. Uh, number 15 is Rocky River. Rocky River lost 41-24 to Sun Valley, uh, dropped them three spots in the rankings, and, you know, it's nothing to really do with offense. I think offensively, you know, Tyshawn Carter um, obviously is dynamic, and he's got a couple of receivers out there that are making plays. Uh, namely, uh, James May, number 12, has stepped up, and um, he's a younger kid, but he's making big plays, and they still have Elijah Henry in the backfield, so offensively, you know, Rocky River is a dangerous team, but defensively, they have got to get some help, and, um, you know, they've played tough teams. Now, Richmond is a top 10 team in the state. Sun Valley is a very good offense, and uh, Barry, in their own right, like I said, is a good offense, and, um, you know, they got another uh tough offense this week in Catholic so you know the challenges don't stop for the Rocky River defense but at some point if they're gonna push into that upper echelon of the southwest and their defense is gonna have to match um the offensive explosiveness and potential that they have on that side of the football uh number 14 no change in the ranking is Porter Ridge they won 17-14 over Hunter Huss out of Gastonia uh in that game you know, uh, running back Mason Mills, number five, is a very good player. Uh, but they also have a defensive back. His name slips my mind now, but I, I talked to Tim Winters out of Union County. He told me this kid had three interceptions in that game. That's very impressive. And, um, you know, they got the big battle of the cookout this week with uh, Sun Valley. So, um, you know, Coach Mike Hurts is really doing a good job. Got that program going in the right direction a lot sooner than a lot of us expected. And, um, you know, they're going to be in 4A still, but if they can build that thing back up and where they can get into the playoffs on the small 4A level, they can be, you know, a tough out here in the, um, maybe not this year, but in the coming seasons and get that thing back to where Porter Ridge had it when um, they were rolling under um, Harden a few years ago. Uh, number 13, moving up two spots in the ranking, is Harding. And uh, Harding won 26-0 over West Charlotte. It was the biggest win over West Charlotte since 1987. And, you know, it, it was funny. At the game, um, you know, Harding was doing really well. I mean, it really wasn't close. I mean, it was a dominating performance. And, um, you know, there was one point the crowd was just kind of sitting there enjoying it. And... <laughs> I heard one of the coaches say, hey, y'all need to get up and start cheering. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I hope the Harding fans will get behind, you know, these guys because they've worked hard and um, it's been a long time um, since they've been 2-1. and one, And, you know, they've got a big game uh, tomorrow night against East Mech, who's also 2-1. and one. And um, 
how Harding plays in that game will tell us where they can be um, going into conference play. And I've got, I think they have an outside shot at a playoff berth. And we all know Coach Sam Griner's goal is playoffs. And um, I know those guys want to cut his hair. <laughs> so, um, you know, Harding is, is playing well, uh, especially behind that defense who pitched a shutout. It's a very impressive job. Uh, number 12 um, is North Mech. North Mech lost 28-18 to to East Mech. They did move up one spot in the rankings. Um, North Mech's Emmanuel Wilson had a big game on the ground. Um, over 150 yards rush, I believe it was 175. Had a very impressive touchdown run. Dale Ross was there. Um, now for North Mech, um, they're going to get Calvin McCollum back very soon. Maybe tomorrow night. I'm not totally sure. But um, that will be a big boost for their defense. And um, offensively, um, they've got to do better up front on the offensive line. Coach Baker is an offensive line guy. That's where he came from. He was offensive line coach at Mooresville. And uh, I know he takes a lot of pride in that, and they're going to continue to work at it. They got a game with Community School of Davidson where I think they can work on some things they want to feature uh, before they get into conference play here in a couple weeks. And um, it's the fourth home game in a row for North Mech. So, um, you know, I can get a two and two split on that, which is not bad, and um, kind of build on things from there. Uh, but that's the rankings from uh, 22 to 12. So my explanations of why I ranked them where they were. Agree, disagree, let me know. I appreciate the time. Thanks for watching, and uh, good luck to everybody playing on Friday night. Thanks.